Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. So I just checked the instructions and the next thing to do on the bodice is clip and press all seams. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Actually, I've changed my mind as to what I'm going to do next. I'm not going to take this to the ironing board. Instead, I'm going to work on the center front um, seam, center front parts um, where there's the overlap in the center front to close the bodice. And uh, what I am thinking of doing is actually finishing off this raw edge now um, so I don't have to worry about it continuously fraying and then being annoying as I go along further with this project. So what I'm thinking of doing is just trimming off the excess satin and then I'm going to use my bias binding, um, just the cheap polyester one. I'm not making any special bias binding out of this satin fabric, especially since the bias binding won't be seen. This is simply to get rid of the raw edges and make the inside of this bodice closure nice and clean. So I've just trimmed off the excess there and this is the bias binding that I'm talking about. Same one that I used for Jasmine, Masquerade Aurora and now Live Action Aurora. Um, so I have two options, either to use the bias binding, um, like fold it over the raw edge like that and then sew that down. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. So it would be on both sides. Or the other thing that I was thinking of doing, and I think I'll go down, down this route, is fold over the satin edge so it's, it's covering the raw edge of the cotton. And then on top of the satin raw edge, I would put the bias binding over top and I would stitch that down on both sides of the bias tape. And then that would finish off that edge quite nicely. Um, you know, I may as well just go ahead and do it now. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky to do. Actually, you know what? I am going to take this to the ironing board and iron down this satin part because it will be much easier to work with once I've done that. But first I need to trim the other side.
I didn't get to show any of the ironing on camera because I did that while I was on a Discord chat and I was using my phone for that. Um, but yeah, I took it to the iron. I've ironed open all of the seams as best as I can. Uh, these ones here were really hard to do, but I tried. Um, a few things. First thing, I ironed these darts on the front panel of the bodice um, flat like that rather than just to the right or just to the left and the reason why I did this is because I'm thinking of using this as the burning channel for my cable tie burning. Um, so there'll be a cable tie here, a cable tie here. I will leave this seam um, I won't put any boning here. I will simply, and this is what I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll actually go ahead with it, um, is just folding over the raw edge of the satin and then, like I did with the hem facing of the skirt, I will just do that crisscross stitch up along there and along here. I actually now know it's called the herringbone stitch, um, thanks to Liam's video about the making of her bodice. Um, yep, yeah, so that's front, side, and then coming towards the back panels. For this curved seam, I'm probably just going to trim down this seam allowance to be quite small, um, so I don't have any of this extra fabric that wants to keep going that way. So hopefully that will lie flat. Um, and then, yeah, again with this, I'll just trim that down so it's quite small. And then I'll probably just um, hand sew the satin layer under like that to the interlining of the bodice, like how I would do these seams. For the actual back seam, I've left it with like a heap of fabric here because I'm thinking of using this fabric as burning channel fabric. Like here, I'll, I'll demonstrate. I'm thinking of turning this piece on itself like that and then sewing that down and then this will form a bone channel, burning channel and then I could literally put the burning in that in that channel and that will hold the back straight and hopefully that way I won't need any burning in the side back or the side seams. So that's my thinking. Oh, one more thing. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a faint yellow chalk line and that I've put in there to help me remember where the waist line is. The waistline is here, so I'm thinking that the burning for the center back piece will only come down to that yellow line. And reason being is because this part out here, this actually doesn't lay flat, it sort of poofs out over the volume caused by the back of the skirt. Um, there is also the little bum pad and then the corset also sticks out at the back, so that's, I just want that to flow without any boning. Um, but that top part of the centre back will have boning. Um, I did sew down the bias binding to the center front edges of the bodice so there are no more raw edges there which is good um, and I also hand uh, not hand stitched machine stitched the shoulder seams of the bodice and I did proper stitches this time not just basting stitches so that's all secure um, I don't know if I'm going to continue working on this today. I've been working on it for a bit over four hours now, continuously. Um, and it is a work day tomorrow, so I do need to prepare for the work day. <laughs> um, so I probably won't touch this until next weekend. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I should also, should also mention that I've got this cotton tape and I bought this to use as the waist stay for the bodice 
and basically this will just go at that yellow mark line um, and I'll stitch it down at the centre back and we'll see how I go but essentially this will I'm not doing a very good job of it of demonstrating this but this will wrap around the body um, and close in the front and then the bodice can close over the top of it and that way this is taking all of the stress rather than the bodice. Um, I might need to sew to the seam allowances this cotton tape. So there, there, and then yeah, that's I think that's basically all it that's only where it's needed. So I would stitch it down at the center back and then the sides. Yeah. And then it would just close in the center front with a hook and eye or something. But yeah, that's everything I got done. I mean, the goal was to get some sort of bodice done and I think we achieved that goal. I mean, it's not a very complete bodice, but it is taking shape. Um, but there, there is still quite a bit of work left to do on this. But yeah, that's it so far. And um, I'm hoping that this will be done by, my goal is to get the bodice done, the base bodice done by the end of this month and it's August right now so let's see if I can do it. Hey guys, so I haven't worked much on this this weekend. It is the weekend of, I think it's the 9th or 10th, let me check. It's the 9th of August. Um, I've only worked on this for about a bit over an hour um, and what I've done is I've tried to tidy up some of the seam allowance edges of the inside of the bodice um, so you can see the center back uh, edges here um, what I did was I folded the satin under sewed that down and then I also sewed um, a bit more towards the fold um, to create the burning channel so I'll have burning in here, burning in here and that will help the centre back stand up straight. As for all of the other seams all I did was just trim down the seam allowance of the cotton layer and then the satin layer I just tucked under and pinned that down. Um, originally I was thinking of hand felling all of the all of these down to just the interlining fabric, um, the cotton, but that's going to take forever. So I'm thinking I'll probably just run it under the machine and yes it will leave top stitching on the outside but because there's going to be tool covering or netting, there's going to be netting covering up um, the satin layer anyway, I don't think it will be too obvious. So yeah. I'll do the faster approach. But that's the update for today. I am probably going to leave it for now and come back to it when I feel like it, but I don't feel like it right now. So yeah, that's the update.
Hi everyone, long time no talk. So I am going to get started on or finish up doing the uh, inside edges of the bodice. So here's the bodice on the table. Um, I've already done uh, these seams here and now I just need to finish off this edge and those two edges over there. Um, so that's the goal for this afternoon is to finish all of these edges, the inside edges, and then I can work out the front closure method um, as, as to where the hooks and eyes are going to go along the front of the bodice. That's the plan. I better get to it. So just when I thought all of the inside edges had been done, I realized when ironing opened this part here, um, because this part was quite um, puffy just before, so I flattened it down with the iron. But when ironing, I realized I haven't actually finished all of the inside edges. Um, I still need to do the shoulder seams. So I'm going to do that now. Um, may as well get it over and done with and they shouldn't take too long. Um, I'm hoping no longer than an hour um, just to get rid of this excess fabric. Um, so basically the same way that I did all of these where I just trim down the cotton and then tuck in under the satin underneath and fell that down. So I will do both shoulder seams and then I think that's all I'm going to do for today and I'll continue the rest tomorrow. Um, some thoughts right now that I'm having are I'm thinking that I will need to attach the sleeves before I do the front closure because I feel like if I do the front closure before the sleeves, the sleeves might not sit right. I don't know. So that's what I'm thinking. I also do want to sort out the front and back necklines. Um, so the V-shape in the back. Um, this is probably going to come down to about that point there. I think that is good. I also need to sort out um, the, the distance on the shoulder. So this part here definitely needs to go outwards a bit more. And this part here, I think this is pretty much perfect, but I have no idea how I'm going to attach the sleeves. Um, the bottom edge should be the last thing to do, um, I think. Like, I think I would want to get this front closure done first before sorting out this bottom edge, because as you can see, there's a bit of overlap and I want to make sure that that's all okay. So I'm thinking the order of things to do is today finish off the inside edges um, so that's the shoulder seams tomorrow hoping to get around to actually trying this on over the corset to figure out where i want the back v to end also where the shoulder straps need to be cut um, because they're too wide at the moment and also figuring out the front neckline we'll see how i go but Gosh, this bodice is taking forever and it's really difficult. I didn't realize it would be so difficult, but it is. So that's the update for today. I will finish off what I need to do today and I'm going to call it a day because uh, it's just so frustrating. <laughs>
next day and obviously I've got the bodice on so I've just quickly put in um, the waist tape um, I've just sewn that to the side seams and also the center back seam and so that will help keep the bodice in place um, at the waist because before without the waist tape it just wanted to keep riding up at the back so that helps prevent the back from riding up um, you can see the little flap thing um, at the bottom of the bodice so just beneath where the waistline is so if the point there that's the waistline where the waist tape is currently and then this is the little flappy piece at the bottom of the bodice which I think I'm going to leave like this because I want it to be able to splay out nicely over the top of the skirt and this obviously depends on how poofy the back of the skirt is because who knows it might actually be very poofy and if not all good as well because this um, little flap can accom accommodate for various sized um, skirt shapes. Coming around to the front, um, oh, the chemise that I've got on, I shouldn't even call it a chemise, it's not really a chemise, but it's a lightweight cotton singlet top. Um, this is the same one that I use underneath my jasmine costume um, and it's just got thin spaghetti straps which can easily be covered up and it's also got a deep V back um, so the corset works with it. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Something about this underlayer. Um, no, there's nothing else to say about that. Um, so moving on to the front portion of the bodice. So the waist tape has really helped to um, like give me an idea of where the front will come since it's no longer riding up at the back. Uh, shoulder seams, so this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, oh, now I remember. Um, these straps, I obviously want to cover up these straps, so I think that I'm going to cut this down um, so it just covers the shoulder straps of my singlet top. And then for the very edges around here, um, the satin layer is just going to be tucked under, I think. And this is all just what I'm thinking at this point in time. I might not necessarily go through with it. So if I tuck that edge under, so it would look something like that. And then I would have the sleeve attached as well. Um, and then the front would close with hooks and eyes and it would have a v-neck down to this point where the singlet top is. Yeah, something like that. It's really hard to show with one hand. Um, the other thing is the very back of the bodice. I don't know how I'm going to show this, but I will try. Um, so this is the back. And the corset is, is the corset? I think the corset comes down to about here, if I'm not mistaken. I can feel it. Ah, this is really hard. I think it comes down to about here. So I can take down the back, the quite deep I think. I still need to figure out where the back of the corset is because I can't feel it. can't feel it through here. Here we go. There it is. That's the top of the corset. So I'm thinking, hang on, I can't see. Mm. One inch. I'm thinking I can cut this down deeper to about one, e one inch deeper um, for the back V. And obviously the shoulder straps will be thinner as well. And there's that weird wrinkling that's going on at the side backs. Can't do much about that. I'm hoping that the netting layer will help disguise that. Um, 
And then the only other thing to figure out is the bottom edge of this bodice, which I think is pretty much going to be following the edge that it's already been cut to. Hopefully all of that made sense, um, that it's not ideal showing you a bodice like this while filming and trying it on at the same time and doing everything one-handed and also in a very squashed up mirror as well. Um, but I hope that gives you an idea of the things that I am looking for um, when trying this on and making adjustments. Yeah. I'll, I'll just have to do some of this off camera because I really can't do it on camera. Um, but yeah, figuring out things like the, where is it? The side seam? Where is it? Over here. There's the side seam. Um, figuring out how much I want to tuck that under by the bottom edge at the side seam. So it would look something like that. But yeah, little things like that I will need to do off camera. Oh, and at the moment I've just safety pinned the waist tape, but eventually I'll put in a hook and eye closure so I don't have to do the whole safety pin thing. Although the safety pin thing works fine. <laughs> Um, more of a temporary solution. Anyway, I better get on to fitting and making adjustments to the rest of this because I really need to get this bodice somewhere close to done because it's been way too long, as you know. Anyway, catch you in the next clip.